Here's an incident in the life of a Mr. Barlow and a Mrs. Brown. The scene is at the seaside. I hope I look all right today, though I don't know why I mind. Mr. Barlow doesn't notice things. He isn't quite that kind. I could hardly shave myself today. My fingers were all thumbs, in case I might meet Mrs. Brown. Good gracious, here she comes. Good morning, Mr. Barlow. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Brown. Well, fancy meeting you here. I'm just strolling around the town. The clouds are gathering overhead. <laughs> the rain is coming down. Good morning, Mr. Barlow. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Brown. Good morning, Mr. Barlow. Good morning, Mrs. Brown. A fancy meeting you here. I'm just walking around the town. You're looking very smart today. Oh, I much admire your gown. Well, good morning, Mr. Barlow. Good morning, Mrs. Brown. Good morning, Mr. Barlow. Good morning, Mrs. Brown. Fancy meeting you here. Just strolling around the town. I'd like to call on you tonight. Oh, rather, do come round. Oh, good. Good morning, Mr. Barlow. Good morning, Mrs. Brown. Good morning, Mr. Barlow. Good morning, Mrs. Brown. A fancy meeting you here. I'm just strolling around the town. I like this nice. Yes, that's the adjective. Affection is the noun. Great. Good morning, Mr. Barlow. Mm, good morning, Mrs. Brown. Pictures tonight again? Rather. The pictures were just wonderful. I did enjoy last night. I'm glad we like each other, though I'm sure it isn't right. I'll walk a little way today and leave the rest to fate. We ought to cut these meetings out. Silly ass. Too late. Good morning, Mr. Barlow. Good morning, Mrs. Brown. Fancy meeting you here. I'm just strolling around the town. You're looking rather worried. Yes, and you've a little frown. Good morning, Mr. Barlow. Good morning, Mrs. Brown. Good morning, Mr. Barlow. Good morning, Mrs. Brown. Fancy meeting you here. I'm just strolling around the town. Our affection's causing scandal. Yes, I fear it's got renown. Good morning, Mr. Barlow. Good morning, Mrs. Brown. Good morning, Mr. Barlow. Good morning, Mrs. Brown. Fancy meeting you here. I'm just strolling around the town. My husband's coming down today. My wife's already down. Well, goodbye, Mr. Barlow. Goodbye, Mrs. Brown. Now, shedding my identity as Mr. Barlow and renewing my own, I feel I must point out the reason for the failure of these two marriages, in fact, of most marriages. When the husband's most pliable, the wife's mood goes from terse to terser. But when she's sweet and really able, the husband's always vice versa. And that's why married folk are fickle and treat each other in for mousley. They want things really identical, but never simultaneously. In marriage, there are many who mean gladly to get through it. They know just what each likes to do, but seldom when to do it. Of disappointment, that's the font, a truth they try to smother. They never want just what they want at the same time as each other. Darling. Yes? Sweet one, shall we go back now to our warm and cushiony flat and sit in front of the fire and, uh, shall we? No. There you are, you see. I'd give everything I've got. If I could only meet my ideal. My heart I'd place in dainty hands and at her dainty feet, I wouldn't eat. If there's a girl whose subtlety will make my men friends envy me, to her girlfriends will infer things to make them envy her, I'd give everything I've got, my house, my car, and half a yacht, I'd give everything I've got to meet her. If there's a girl who looks so pure, who's never studied her allure, who's free from reddened nails and paint, but knows the ways of those who ain't, I'll give everything I've got to meet her. If there's a girl who will knock knock, then say it's Ermintrude, old cock. When Ermintrude who, I shout in fear, the say I'm Ermintrude in dear. I'll give everything I've got to meet her. If there's a girl who loved but me, but never, never jealously, if she's got beauty to entice, and a sister just as nice, I'd give everything I've got to meet her. I've met poor ones and the swells in habiting hotels or in flats of some incalculable rent. I've met girls in joints with nine and ninety points for what I want a hundred cents. I'd give everything I've got if I could only meet my ideal. My heart I placed in dainty hands and at her dainty feet. I would kneel. If there's a girl who's always loath to flaunt her love while we're betrothed, but when we're wed we'll look so hot that everybody will think we're not, 
I'd give all my worldly goods, cut a messy arm to wood. I'd give all my worldly goods to me. But if there's a girl who, while she's young, no song of love will leave unsung, the one who, when her years are ripe, won't be the dog in the manger type. I'd give everything I've got, though I admit it's not a lot. My evening suit is rather shine, the buttons off, it's not refined. My silk pajamas, torn and tried, disclosing what they ought to hide. And with pseudo diamond ring with crack, the one that Audrey gave me that. My medicine chest that helps a man, plus phosphorine and philosan. My dog, untrained, who likes to roam and make a street home from home. My checkbook, my overdraft, at which Audrey laughed and laughed. And said how singular when I swore that R.D. men prefer to draw. My typewriter with double cleft, which will write pounds when I want it. My richest cows who ride the hounds will ride if when I want pounds. Dear if he rides instead of R, my stock's drawn to under par. I'd give my jokes like that a twist to make you miss what others miss. I'd give myself, and that you see, it's five foot ten and more than me. In fact, I'd give everything I've got if I could only meet my ideal. My heart had placed in dainty hands and at her dainty feet. I would kneel. If there's a girl who'd be quite bright whatever time I'm home at night, when her love is undesired, will still make me forget I'm tired. I'd give all I've got in life, and that includes my present wife. I'd give all I've got in life to me. Her. As was bound to be a heavy load of applications. They should be written on very, very thin paper to save the postman trouble. <laughs>